Hello everyone, this is R.S. Miller at the endtimenews.org and today is September 4th, 2013. This is your Fast Track Report. Jordanian Army is on high alert for Syria's strike. Jordan has put its forces on high alert in anticipation of Western airstrikes against the Syrian regime. The Jordanian Kingdom's Air Force has granted Al Arabia special access to an air base where preparations are underway for an, any emergency. The Jordanian Air Force is one of the strongest in the Arab world, possessing many of the most advanced fighter jets in the world today. Jordan is also one of the few countries that possess the multiple HIMARS truck-mounted rocket launchers that exceed 70 kilometers in range and can identify a target within seconds. A political solution in Syria remains the favorable option for Jordan, but the army says it is prepared to defend the country and its people at any time. Jordan has said it will not be a launch pad for any foreign military intervention in Syria, but as the West threatens to strike the regime in Syria in response to the use of chemical weapons, it seems that Jordan's army is ready for various possibilities. On the other side of Syria, Turkish troops are on high alert near the Syrian border. Turkish troops near the Syrian border are on high alert, the Zeman newspaper reported yesterday. According to the newspaper, if a military operation begins in Syria, the first missile strikes on this country's territory will be made by the launchers located in the Kerya Khan area of the Turkish province of Haiti. Moreover, the servicemen are intensely trained near the Syrian border. The military equipment will be delivered and personnel will appear on the territory. Some Western countries, as well as Turkey, have already supported intervention in Syria following another escalation of the situation there on August 21st. Meanwhile, President Putin warns the West against one-sided action in Syria, according to Depkafal. Alongside this warning, President Vladimir Putin said he doesn't exclude supporting a UN resolution on punitive strikes if it is proved that Assad, the, the Assad regime used poison gas against its own people. He noted that even in the U.S., there are experts who believe that the evidence presented by the administration doesn't look convincing, and they don't exclude the possibility that the opposition conducted provocative action to give their sponsors a pretext for military intervention. He suggested the photos of children gassed to death may have been faked and they were victims of Al-Qaeda terrorism. Putin spoke in an AP interview ahead of the G20 summit opening in St. Petersburg on Thursday. As the U.S. continues to seek a resolution from Congress for a limited strike on Syria, the Russians are sending an additional warship to the eastern Mediterranean. Russia is sending a missile cruiser to the east Mediterranean to take over Navy's operations in the region, the Interfax News Agency has quoted a military source as saying. The ship was expected to reach the east Mediterranean where it will join ships in Russia's regional naval unit in approximately 10 days, said the unnamed source. Israel and the U.S. test fire missiles amid Syria tensions. It's being reported that the launching of two missiles were part of a joint U.S.-Israeli exercise to test the readiness of a missile interceptor system. The missiles were detected near Syria by Russia's early warning radar system. Israel has carried out an unannounced missile test in the Mediterranean, sparking an alert in light of a military buildup in the region for a potential strike on Syria. The confirmation came after the launch of two rockets was detected by Russian radars. Artis Igor Piskunov has the details. The missiles were launched at around 5 a.m. GMT in the Mediterranean, apparently in the central port of the sea, and then headed towards its eastern coast. And this was detected by Russia's early warning system and then reported by the Defense Ministry. At first, no one else could officially confirm that this happened, including Israel and the U.S., but then we've heard from the Israeli Defense Ministry, which announced that this was a test of the new anti-missile defense system. They say it was conducted 
conducted with the assistance of Washington, although this still hasn't been confirmed by the United States. Israel says that a military plane fired a rocket, which was then intercepted uh, or shut down by an interceptor missile. Now, this raises lots of questions over the timing of such tests and how appropriate they are at the moment in that uh, area in the Mediterranean, uh, very close to Syria, with the whole country and the region around it currently being uh, flooded with tension and concern over a possible military intervention uh, into the situation there by the West, although most uh, NATO members have said that they're not planning to take part in any military action against President Assad's regime, France and the U.S. seem to be ready to do so. In fact, earlier, President Obama said that Washington may start a military operation without the approval of the U.N., uh, although he did say he wanted to consult with Congress. But less than 24 hours ago, we've heard from U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry, who said that in this situation, the approval of the Congress isn't really essential. Now, this brings us back to the timing of Tuesday's launches. Many military analysts now say that what happened today may have not only been aimed at testing some new military hardware, but also at checking how much time it takes for possibly Syrian authorities to react to the situation and even possibly to see how much time it takes for Russia's early warning system to react as well. Or, in other words, how much time it takes for these missiles to be detected. But clearly, uh, this only increased the tensions and uncertainty in the region as the uh, international military buildup also continues. Meanwhile, there's a massive U.S. and allied naval deployment in the eastern Mediterranean off Syria's coastline, as well as in the Persian Gulf and the Red Sea. Russia is also sending warships to the troubled region, but denies it's squaring up to America. Let's now take a detailed look at the U.S. fleet there. Five U.S. destroyers loaded with missiles along with an amphibious assault ship are already in the Mediterranean poised for a potential strike. In addition, an aircraft carrier group moved to the Red Sea from the Indian Ocean to support an attack on Syria if ordered. The supercarrier, the USS Nimitz, is one of the largest warships in the world at more than 300 meters long. It's powered by nuclear reactors and has 90 planes and helicopters on board. It's accompanied by a cruiser and three destroyers. It appears as though Congress will approve some sort of military action against Syria. Obama's battle to get congressional approval for a military strike on Syria moved a step closer on Tuesday, with leaders of both parties in Congress announcing that the United States should respond to Syrian President Assad's alleged use of chemical weapons. U.S. President Barack Obama convinced leaders of both Democrats and Republicans in Congress to support his requests for the authorization of a military strike on Syria. After a meeting with more than a dozen senior lawmakers this week, members of both parties went public, praising Obama's plan and pledged a yes vote on the operation against the Syrian government. Friends, we are living in the last days, and although what's about to take place in the Middle East may not be the dreaded Battle of Armageddon, it is certainly a part of that end-time scenario leading up to it. But don't take my word for it. Study the Bible for yourselves and make your own comparison. In Zechariah chapter 14, Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, and your spoil will be divided in your midst. For I will gather all nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken, the houses rifled, and the women ravaged. Half of the city shall go into captivity but the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. And in that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west. The splitting of the Mount of Olives is the physical return of our Lord Jesus Christ to the earth. It will be a glorious day for those who follow the Lord, but not so much for those who don't. Are you saved? There is a link in the box below to a simple prayer of salvation. If you pray it with all sincerity, 
you will be saved. May God bless you.